Hi everyone, I shall be discussing about the pathophysiology of COVID-19. So uh, the main aim of making this video is to give an insight of the pathogenesis of this deadly disease uh, so that we know what is the target site of action of the various drugs that are there on clinical trials. And after knowing the pathophysiology, uh, maybe some of the genius minds can come up with other treatment options. Okay, let's get started. So uh, starting with the coronavirus, uh, so the, the coronavirus has, as you can see here, it has uh, it is a single-stranded RNA virus. So you can see the single-stranded RNA with some nuclear proteins. This is the nuclear capsid. And since it's an enveloped virus, this is the envelope. And these are the spike proteins, what we call the S spikes. Okay, now uh, the coronavirus as it has all been said that it uh, the route of transmission can be either it can uh, be transmitted by the respiratory droplets so the person sneezes or coughs then these uh, viruses through respiratory droplets can travel up to three to six meters and if a person comes in contact uh, in this range will definitely get infected also it uh, it's been proposed that if the virus um, is on the surfaces of say for example tables or chairs or handles it can stay there for almost 24 hours so if a person touches there and then touches the mucous membrane uh, then a person will be infected uh, now also uh, it has also been transmitted by the fecal route now when a person is infected so the virus will enter into the respiratory system of the infected person and uh, it will enter into the lungs so the main site of its action will be in the alveoli so here we can see one alveolus it has uh, type 1 pneumocytes and it has the type 2 pneumocytes with these villi okay so the main site of action of these uh, this coronavirus is the type 2 pneumocytes so it enters the type 2 pneumocytes and what actually happens inside the type 2 pneumocyte i should be describing in uh, in this chart so this is the coronavirus and this is the type 2 pneumocyte okay with the villi so these type 2 pneumocytes they have ACE2 receptor that is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor on the surface and with the help of this receptor this coronavirus will enter into the uh, type 2 pneumocytes after entering into the type 2 pneumocytes what happens at that is that uh, the RNA will be definitely inside the pneumocyte leaving aside the nuclear capsid and everything else so just the nuclear material that is the single stranded rna will be here okay and then uh, it will follow two paths one is that by rna dependent rna polymerase it will as the name suggests it is rna dependent rna polymerase so there will be polymerization so this single stranded rna will polymerize and will form multiple single stranded rnas and second thing is that it will uh, go to the ribosomes and then there will be the translation and this will form various proteins. Now, uh, I shall be repeating again. So here we have the single stranded RNA. Either it will be acted upon by the RNA dependent RNA polymerase and it will also be taken up by the ribosomes and then translation of these uh, into the proteins. Okay, so, so now important thing is that these proteins will be acted upon by proteases and these will form the various, you know, the capsid, various proteins like the capsid, the outer spike proteins of the, uh, uh, of the coronavirus, except the RNA which is here. Now this RNA will bind to this and we'll find a lot of coronaviruses, new, newly formed coronaviruses. Now coming back to where we started, so these coronaviruses are now inside the lumen of the alveoli. Okay, so um, so these will be released from here, from the type 2 pneumocytes, they will be inside the uh, alveolus. And they will stimulate the immune system, and which is the innate immunity, and the macrophages will first come into play. So macrophages will be activated, and upon activation, these macrophages will be releasing interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and tumor necrotic factor alpha. Now this interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and tumor necrotic factor alpha, these will act on this capillary uh, that is uh, carrying the blood and it will cause two things that is vasodilatation and increase the capillary permeability. Now once these do the action of vasodilatation increasing the vascular permeability what happens is that so there is increase in the vascular permeability so the fluid will come into the interstitium it will come it will go inside the alveoli 
as well. So there will be increased alveolar edema. And if it involves all the alveoli of the lungs, it can lead to a serious condition which is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is the leading cause of death right now. Okay, so uh, another thing that can happen is uh, these fluids, interstitial fluid which is coming out of the capillaries, can cause the collapse. It will be pressure over here and it will cause the collapse of the lung alveoli, leading to the alveolar collapse. So there will be uh, no gaseous exchange and there will be hypoxemia causing certain onset of breathlessness. Okay, so uh, this is what it does in the alveoli. Now, uh, now there is hypoxemia and there is a certain onset of breathlessness. This hypoxemia, uh, there will be um, partial pressure of the oxygen will be reduced. And this will activate the chemoreceptors and the sympathetic nervous system will be stimulated and causing the increased heart rate increase in the respiration rate. So, um, so this will be the effect of the vasodilatation vascular permeability which can either cause you know, the alveolar edema or it can cause alveolar collapse leading to sudden onset of breathlessness, uh, increased heart rate, increased respiration rate. Besides these, uh, besides the macrophages, the neutrophils also come into play. So neutrophils what they're going to do is they will release the reactive oxygen species and they will release proteases which will cause further damage to the type 1 pneumocytes and uh, further increasing the permeability okay so uh, one more thing is that the interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tumor necrotic factor will also act on the hypothalamus causing fever also that when there is too much of the inflammatory response it will uh, stimulate the production of sputum and cough which can lead to consolidation or pneumonia so these are the clinical presentations as we can see fever cough with sputum production certain onset of the breathlessness so these so fever cough and certain onset of breathlessness. These three uh, symptoms are very much suggestive of a COVID-19 infection. Now, uh, now, what 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 can be the you know um, the severe severity of the disease? So, if there is severe vasodilatation, as we can see here, uh, if there is a severe vasodilatation, so we know that the capillary permeability is increased and there is vasodilatation. So the venous return will be decreased and the peripheral resistance will be decreased. If the venous return and peripheral resistance is decreased, so there is decrease in the cardiac output and decrease in the BP, which are the findings of shock. When there is shock, there is hypoperfusion to the organs, which can lead to multi-organ failure. So they can be either the kidney failure, they can be liver failure. Okay, so these are the uh, deadly effects of the viruses and <clears throat> of this virus specifically. Now coming to the treatment options, uh, we studied initially that the virus can enter into the type 2 pneumocyte by the help of this AC2 receptor. So if we give a drug that inhibits this entry, then we can be very much successful in preventing the disease or you know, it, it can be a good treatment option. So second is if we inhibit this um, RNA dependent RNA polymerase which is actually causing the polymerization of the virus and further multiplication so if we inhibit this RNA dependent RNA polymerase or if we inhibit this proteases so the further protein components of the virus won't be formed so uh, these are the sites of the actions that of the drugs that are right now on the clinical trial so the drug that will inhibit the ACE2 um, receptor is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine uh, the second drug that we have is Remdesivir, which is uh, an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase inhibitor. The third drug, third drug that we have is uh, Ritonavir, which will inhibit the proteases. So these are the present clinical trials um, that are running on the following drugs and where they act and why we are using the particular uh, drug is, I hope it's pretty much clear now. And uh, also, since we are seeing that it's more or less of an immune-mediated response, so there are certain theories we say that uh, may or may not the use of methylpred can be helpful for the patient, but it's still under the clinical trial, so it's too early to say anything. We need a we need a vast majority of the patients to do the trials on. So, um, but yes, 
methylprednisolone is effective in some viral infections uh, regarding COVID-19 nothing has been given out yet so we can look forward uh, to some more treatment options I guess and uh, I hope this video was useful for all of you thank you so much